Hi guys. Well, it has suddenly turned into a blisteringly cold night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, this undisclosed swamp. We are down to a bone rattling 53 degrees here in the Sunshine State. I have on my Alaska parka. I have on my sheepskin Uggs. I got my little portable heater in my lap here as we uh, wade into a bone chilling. I think we're heading to 47 degrees tonight. Wish me luck surviving the night. Uh, I know all of you people basking in this record heat all over the country uh, have a lot of sympathy for us down here in Florida. But anyway, guys, I, I have, uh, as some of you may know, uh, <clears throat> I have not exactly uh, had a very good couple of days. My uh, mental state is fragile, shall we say, but somehow I just told Sandy over at Environmental Coffee House I was trying to... Uh, get up the energy to do a collapse chronicle tonight. Well, before I head to my default Netflix, it wasn't hard because I simply went to the mainstream media news, to Yahoo News, for the number one story on this planet, on Yahoo News, from the good old New York Times, the New York Times going back to where I am damn glad I'm not uh, tonight, and that is Austin, Texas. Good God, uh, being in Texas tonight. That little dog, I need to uh, get my little lap warmer. Oh dear, you need to get So, uh, what does the New York Times have to say? I think it is colder in Austin, Texas tonight. And in New York, as far as I know, it's uh, it's going to be uh, colder in Austin, Texas, than Ithaca, New York. I do know that. Take it away, New York Times, and give us a glimpse of the future. A glimpse of the future in Texas. Climate change means trouble for power grids. So this is what uh, and. Whatever is true for Texas here, guys, uh, is, is true for pretty much anywhere else. Uh, but we're going to look at Texas, and you, I'll put the link on here. You can read this yourself, but uh, if you are as bored as I am tonight and just want to sit around and have me read it for you, I'll be happy to do that. Take it away, New York Times. Give us a glimpse of the future of the uh, collapse of uh, civilization, the ongoing unraveling of uh, the power grid in the U.S. in 2021. Well, I enjoy a glass of red wine. A little too chilly for margaritas right now. I'm going to stick to the red wine. Anyway. Huge winter storms have plunged large parts of the central and southern U.S. into an energy crisis this week as frigid blasts of Arctic weather crippled electric grids and left millions of Americans without power amid dangerously cold temperatures. And as far as I know, that is still going on this very minute. The grid failures were most severe in Texas where more than four million people, in, including uh, our own tribes, <coughs> our own listeners, excuse me, here at Collapse Chronicles, where more than four million people woke up Tuesday morning facing power failures. On Tuesday, Governor Greg Abbott called for an emergency reform. Oh, did I say that? This is Tuesday. This is Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. <clears throat> so today, earlier today, uh, Governor Greg Abbott called for an emergency reform. I, I, I love the name of this, guys. You can't make this shit up. 
a, an emergency reform of the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, saying the operator of the state's power grid, quote, has been anything but reliable over the past 48 hours. Finally, a, a statement from Greg Abbott that I can agree with. Yes. Energy analysts have begun to identify a few key factors behind the grid failures in Texas. Record-breaking cold weather spurred residents to crank up their electric heaters. Wow! And push demand for electricity beyond the worst-case scenarios that grid operators had planned for. Oh. At the same time, many of the state's gas-fired power plants were knocked offline amid icy conditions, and some plants appeared to suffer fuel shortages as natural gas demand spiked nationwide. And of course, my favorite of all, as several of you have sent me articles on, on this, my number one favorite of all of this, uh, on top of all of this from the fossil fuel, uh, many of Texas's wind turbines also froze and stopped working. You, I absolutely love it seeing these uh, Save the Planet wind turbines frozen solid, unable to turn. The resulting electricity shortfalls forced grid operators in Texas to impose rotating block blackouts on homes and businesses starting mon Monday to avert a broader collapse of, of the system. Separate regional grids in the Southwest and Midwest are also coming under serious strain this week. But, but of course, uh, these rolling blackouts. When I, when I heard from my buddy in Austin this weekend, what did you say, man, that in, in Austin, Texas, I, I mean, just in, in a, just in a regular, you know, suburban neighborhood in Austin, Texas. What did he say? He had been, and this was hours ago that he had been uh, out of power. Was it 10 hours that, uh, and, and, and I don't know if he's gotten his power back. This, this crisis has highlighted a deeper warning. Now we're going to the big picture a deeper warning for power systems throughout the countries, throughout the country and countries probably. Electric grids can be engineered to handle a wide range of severe conditions as long as grid operators can reliably predict the dangers ahead. But as climate change accelerates, many electric grids will face novel and extreme weather events that go beyond the historical conditions those grids were designed for, putting the systems at risk of catastrophic failures. Uh, that is exactly what you can look forward to. Catastrophic failures of electric grids. Building electric grids that are resilient in the face of increasingly wild and unpredictable weather will be an enormous challenge, experts say. In many cases, it may prove expensive, although as Texas shows, the cost of grid failure can be extremely costly too. This is uh, Jesse Jenkins, an energy systems engineer at Princeton University. Close quote, I mean, quote, it's essentially a question of how much insurance you want to buy. What makes this problem even harder 
is that we are now in a world where, especially with climate change, the past is no longer a good guide to the future. We have to get much better at preparing for the unexpected. Close quote. Yes, do you think so? The past is no longer a good guide to the future. So what happened in Texas? Texas's main electric grid, which largely operates independently from the rest of the country, is primarily designed to handle the state's most predictable weather extremes, meaning soaring temperatures that spur, you know, soaring summer temperatures that spur millions of Texans to turn up their air conditioners all at once. While freezing weather is rarer, grid operators in Texas have long known that electricity, de electricity demand can also spike in the winter, particularly after severe cold snaps in 2011 and 2018 led millions of Texans to turn up their electric heaters and strain the system. I remember uh, being in that 2011 one. Uh, I, I was down here in 2018, but I remember the winter of 2011, and I think we bottomed out at, I think it was like 14 degrees uh, in Austin in 2011. I think it is one degree in Austin last night. Anyway, but this week's winter storms, which buried the state in snow and ice, and of course, the, the big ice event is literally cranking. As I'm having this, Texas is just going into an ice storm warning for the next 12 hours. So the, the actual worst of this can be unfolding right now as I'm reading this. Uh, but this week's winter storms which buried the state and will continue to bury the state in snow and ice and led to record cold temperatures surpassed all expectations, you know, of the, what is it, the Texas Electric Reliability Council and pushed the grid to its breaking point. Texas grid operators had anticipated in the worst case scenario that the state might need 67 gigawatts of electricity to handle a winter peak, but by Sunday evening, power demand had surged past 69 gigawatts. As temperatures dropped, many homes were and still are at this very second relying on older, inefficient electric resistance heaters which consume more power. The problems compounded from there as frigid weather knocked out of service power plants with more than 30 gigawatts of capacity by Monday night. The vast majority of those failures occurred at thermal plants like natural gas generators as plummeting temperatures paralyzed plant operations as soaring demand for natural gas nationwide appeared to leave some plants struggling to procure fuel. A number of the state's power plants were also offline for scheduled maintenance in response for next summer's peak. At times, the state's fleet of wind farms also lost up to five gigawatts of capacity as many turbines froze in the icy conditions and stopped working. This was uh, Joshua Rhodes, uh, an expert on the state's electric grid from the University of Texas and good old Austin, quote, quote, 
no one's model of the power system envisioned that all 254 Texas counties would come under a winter storm warning at the same time. It is putting major strain on both the electricity grid and the gas grid. Uh, and don't forget the wind turbine grid that feeds both electricity and heat. So, of course, what are the techno-utopians going to do about this? Uh, I guess starting in about 20 years. In theory, experts say there are technical solutions that can avert such problems, but they can be costly to install and the difficulty is in anticipating exactly when and where such technical solutions will be needed. Let's look at wind turbines, you know, the darling of the Joe Biden crowd, wind turbines. Wind turbines, for instance, can be equipped with heaters and other devices so that they can operate in icy conditions, as is often already done in the upper Midwest where cold weather is more frequent. Gas plants can be built to store oil on site and burn that fuel if needed, as is often done in the Northeast, where natural gas shortages are more common. Grid regulators can design markets that pay extra to keep a fleet of backup power plants in reserve in case of emergencies, as is often done in the Mid-Atlantic. But all of these solutions cost money and grid operators are often wary of forcing consumers to pay extra for safeguards if they don't think they will be needed. This is uh, Daniel Cohen, an associate professor of civil and environmental engineering at Rice University in Houston. Quote, building in resilience comes at a cost and there is a risk of both underpaying but also of overpaying. It is a difficult balancing act. I bet it is. In the months ahead, as Texas grid operators and policymakers study this week's storm, they may start to ask how and if the grid might be bolstered to handle extremely cold temperatures. Is there aging infrastructure in dire need of repair? Would it make more sense to build more connections between Texas's power grid and other parts of the country, a move that state has long resisted? Should homeowners be encouraged to install costly backup battery storage units or more efficient heat pumps that use electricity? Yes, blah, blah, blah. One difficulty in the middle of all of this planning is the wild card. One difficulty is that climate change is making it harder to prepare. Overall, the state is getting warmer as global temperatures rise and cold weather extremes are on average becoming less common over time, but some climate scientists have also suggested, can you say Paul Beckwith, uh, some climate scientists have also suggested that global warming could paradoxically bring more winter storms in the future like the ones seen this week. There is some research suggesting that the warming in the Arctic is weakening the jet stream. The high level air current that circles the northern latitudes and usually holds back the frigid polar vortex. Yes, this allows the cold air to escape to the south 
especially when a blast of additional warming strikes the stratosphere and deforms the vortex, which is exactly what happened. When was it? About three weeks ago, this catastrophic stratospheric warming over the Arctic. Uh, the result can be episodes of plunging temperatures even in places that rarely get nipped by frost. But this remains an active area of debate among climate scientists. Yes. With some apocalyptimists less certain that polar vortex disruptions are becoming more frequent, making it even trickier for grid planners to anticipate the dangers ahead. So let's move a little bit out of Texas. All over the country, electric utilities and grid operators are confronting similar questions as climate change threatens to intensify heat waves, droughts, floods, water shortages, and other calamities. They forgot hurricanes, all of which could create new and unforeseen risk for our nation's electricity systems. And of course, don't forget the cyber hacks. Uh, in addition, don't forget the cyber hacks. Dealing with those risks will carry a hefty price tag. One recent study found that the Southeast alone may need 35% more electric capacity by 2050 simply to deal with the known, the known hazards of climate change. But of course, as uh, Donald Rumsfeld and Don Juan Matus tell you, it is the unknown unknowns. The unknown unknowns of climate change that are, that are going to kick us in the ass. The task of building resilience is becoming increasingly urgent. Many policymakers are increasingly promoting electric cars and electric heating as a way of curbing greenhouse gas emissions. But as more of the nation's economy depends on reliable flows of electricity, the cost of failure will become ever more dire. And they wind up the number one story on the planet from the New York Times with this quote from Emily Grubert, uh, an expert in electricity systems at Georgia Tech University. Quote, this is going to be a significant challenge. We need to decarbonize our power systems so that climate change does not keep getting worse. But we also need to adapt to changing conditions at the same time. And the latter alone, the, the adaptation, is going to be very costly. We can already see that the systems we have today are not handling this very well. Close quote. Do you think so, Emily? Anyway, well, that was certainly an easy uh, chronicle of the collapse. Uh, and uh, this is one more reason I am a snowbird uh, fleeing to Florida. Good Lord, but uh, my fingers are getting cold. And... Uh, I need to get out there and enjoy some leftover Mexican food while I still can and I, while I still have an electric grid here in Florida to put some uh, Mexican food in my microwave oven and I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your microwave oven, 
uh, your refrigerator and especially your electric heater while you still can, if you still can, because if you live in Texas, you can't. Cheers. Bye, guys.